everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at Brick Fair Virginia 2022, and I am joined by Daniel. He's, he's going to be taking us through this massive Harry Potter layout. Now, we first covered this last year at a LEGO convention, and you only had about half this display there, so we've seen some of this before, but you continue to expand massively on it. Correct, yeah. So last year at uh, Philly Brickfest, we had the castle and Quidditch. And so we've now added kind of the grounds and then Hogsmeade Village beyond that. And also a little bit of stuff up here in the front, a little more ocean with the, or lake rather, with the tower from the Goblet of Fire. Uh, so just more and more detail just all around. So well, we can start at the castle here once again and cover some yeah. of that. Absolutely. So the castle, again, uh, unchanged from the last time, but all uh, the whole section is here or the whole castle is here. Uh, so it's based it on the model down at Universal Studios in Orlando. Uh, so all the towers, the greenhouses, though, I will give your viewers, uh, you know, props. They did point out, I claimed in the last video, that we had the right number of greenhouses, and someone pointed out that there are supposed to be nine, and I went back and checked, and they were correct. So we didn't add a ninth one, didn't quite have space. The commenters don't miss that stuff. The commenters do, uh, clearly, clearly. So, but yeah, so the castle, uh, you know, got the, both of the sections here, got the residential dormitory section on the far side there. Um, and then the kind of classroom side over here. So just a few details have changed there. Added the, you've got the, we, since the last convention, we have the new dragon. Uh, so put that up on there. And then, uh, as I said, the tower here in the front from the Goblet of Fire when they dive down into the lake. So my daughter keeps pushing me. We need to do an underwater section now, you know, kind of have a cutout from the table. But then we'd have to do custom tables. So. But, uh, some interiors on some of this, right? Correct, yeah. So the, the Great Hall opens up. Uh, there's an interior in there. We do have an interior on the... I can yeah. walk over there and show you. So. so, yep, so the Great Hall. Pop the roof off and you can open that up. So the, the fun little secret here is that we ended up... So I made a rule that every time I went into the Lego store for the last two years, I had to buy one of the little Harry Potter minifig packs. And every single one of them came with Harry. So any minifigure that isn't facing you, it's Harry's face. See, like this guy right here? It's totally Harry. So anyone, you know, that, that guy right there on the bridge, that's Harry. And every, anyone that's not facing you is Harry, because we had to just use up all those faces. So, and then the, uh, the inside of the tower, that opens up. So it's, uh, the batteries died on that, but the staircase does rotate. So it, uh, so we got the, the moving staircase, so to speak, and then the dormitory here opens up as well. So we got the Gryffindor common room and dormitory in there. So got all that, and then obviously the various courtyards and stuff are all spread, spread throughout. So then the, the back section here is where we begin to um, get into some of the new stuff. So the clock tower, and then there's the... Uh, the, the covered bridge, the wooden covered bridge that comes out the back. So that the build kind of stopped there before. And so this is then what connects and eventually lets you t follow the path to Hogsmeade Village in the movies. Um, and then we also added the Owlry there. It sits uh, off from the main castle, isn't connected, so you have to walk to that. Presumably because of the owl poop is, the, is what my daughter's theory was. So and it sits up on kind of a rocky crag looking over the... Uh, the castle, so built up some more rock work there to elevate that. And then um, we got the kind of little bit more of the Forbidden Forest. Didn't have as many trees last time, so I bulked out the trees and we added Argog the spider uh, with all the spider webs. Pick a brick wall, very helpful there. Um, and then so then the back section here with the snow, so this is all Hogsmeade. So you normally only see Hogsmeade in the winter time. Uh, so it went with kind of a winter theme and then it gave it different color as well, which was nice off of the main build. So we've got the Hogsmeade train station and then various sections of the village and then I kind of ran out of time at the far end so it got less and less uh, original as we went to, and then finally ended with the medieval market village. So I figured that set's old enough most people aren't going to know that that one is uh, me cheating. This is the evolution of building for a Lego convention. Eventually you That's just right. end up with a medieval market That's right. village. Yeah, exactly. You know, it fits in a pirate build, it fits in a castle build, Harry Potter. You know, you start all, you know, custom window shape and everything, and then, it, oh crap, I only have three weeks left, two weeks left. Uh, medieval Market Village, Medieval Market Village. And then finally the Shrieking Shack there at the very far end. And again, that was, just went to the Lego store, okay, two of these, slap them together and call it good. So, um, so but yeah, so this was a really fun addition, kind of to expand the grounds a little bit and get to do different shapes and things. So the, the center section there, 
kind of laid it out as a triangle. So that's all one big piece. So that was a bit tricky to figure out. Probably shouldn't have spent so much time on that, but I've had time to finish two more buildings at the end. But what are some of the specific buildings in here? So they're just kind of generally, just kind of based on, their, I, I, there are specific ones. Um, I didn't really model them on anything particular. It was just more kind of trying to do the a style that looked like it fit in with the rest of the village. So just kind of focused on that. And then the cobblestone pathways and then all the little details. And everyone keeps asking about the sheep. There's sheep everywhere. And the answer is I accidentally threw that bag into the box. And so it just showed up here and I'd bought a bunch of them, hoping they'll be the next goat, knock on wood. And uh, then I'll sell them for a fortune. Even on the here. ground floor. Exactly. So I got like 50 of them. So man, if we get another goat out of the sheep, I'm going to be set. But uh, so they just ended up in the bag. So we just spread them all everywhere. And uh, now everyone's confused. Like, is that from the movie? I don't remember there being sheep everywhere. So that's been a fun little thing this time around. The train station here is also great. So talk about kind of the design of that. Correct. Yeah. So this is so there's an actual train station. I'm blanking on the name of it uh, somewhere over in, uh, the, in Europe that they actually shot this, uh, the scenes from the movie. So it's modeled after after that. And uh, so, yeah, just a, the big platform. So this is where, uh, in the latter years, they get off and ride the little carriages uh, the, after their first year at Hogwarts. So had a couple of the carriages that, because they just released that as a set this year. Uh, so included that in there as well. And uh, yeah, this was the first one. So the scale of it, I wanted the windows to, because it's a very distinctive kind of look to the windows in the actual train station. So we kind of scaled it off of that in order to be able to do that technique. And originally, I had intended it to be flipped uh, so that it could, the track could just go right through and the train could pull through the station, but couldn't quite get enough room because it was this is the first time I've seen it all laid out, so I didn't actually know how big it was. <laughs> probably don't have a lot of space to have this all yeah, laid out. Yeah. My, my wife has graciously seated the whole basement to me for Legoing, but it's not big enough to have all this displayed. So these are the, this is the first time I've seen it all together was the other day when we got it put together. So What was that process like setting all this up here? Yeah, it takes a long time. So, uh, so everything breaks down really small. So like the walls are all separate, each castle building, each tower, it all comes apart. So it's, it's a real mess when we first get here because I've kind of tetris it into all the different boxes. So the first step is we kind of spread all the pieces out around and I have to, all right, that goes here and that goes here and build it up from the base plates. So you can't see it, but the base plates, I, I used a label maker. And so they've, they've all got a, a number and grid. And so there's, it's, there's labels that show, you know, join base plate one to base plate two right here. And you, so it's kind of a guide to put them all together and figure it all out. So, And then Quidditch is the same as last year, but still, I just love the, the color pop. We can walk around and take a closer yep. look at that, yeah. So this, this whole side looks fantastic as well. Yeah, so, you know, got them all suspended there. So this is the, uh, the Quidditch layout with the, the elevated tower. So the other thing that I changed from last time is I've added backs to them. Uh, so just filled in so the color is all the way around. And uh, yeah, just using the, um, the clear bars to suspend them, give them some action poses and and all of that so that's a, I just love that part it, it's a nice break from the tan right. there's a lot of tan in this build. so much tan in this build everyone keeps asking me well what's your next build gonna be I'm like I have no idea but whatever it is it'll be in tan <laughs> definitely be in tan and then the other part that's new is kind of this lower ground section here um, so there are some parts of Hogwarts that are kind of out away from the castle where they have the flying lesson and things of that nature uh, so we added that section as well just to kind of fill it in a little bit, not just have a bunch of green base plates uh, sitting there to give a little bit more space and things of that nature. So and then on the back side here, I uh, got all the green houses again. They've each got their in little interior uh, with the various you know, pots and things growing in there. And then there's the interior courtyard as well. There you go. That's the view that most people never get. So if people were wondering, you know, what, what's in the courtyard? So and uh, so just got all that laid out. And then we use the, um, the little golden minifigures, the little anniversary ones for statues. Uh, that was a nice, nice way to use those up. And this is the one part that isn't entirely accurate because there isn't actually a train station at Hogwarts. But since I didn't have Hogsmeade before, we uh, kind of uh, just made this section. And uh, so I guess technically we could revamp it now, but I'm probably not gonna do that. So. So so this is obviously a massive layout continuing to grow. Do you have any idea how many pieces are in this whole thing? My best guess is around, um, so I, I think the original build was around 200,000 just because of the rock work and all the little cobbles. So it's probably another eh, 50,000 in the back with what we've added, give or take. So again, 
that could be wildly off by orders of magnitude, but that's my best guess. And, and you've got a ton of minifigures as well. Do you keep track of how many of those are in the build? There's about 350 of the minifigures. Yep. Yeah, spread spread all over the place. And it probably, you know, 80 of them are hairy. <laughs> So what are plans for the fu plans for the future on on this whole layout? Continuing to expand? Yeah. So what we're going to do now? This is this is most of the stuff that's in and around Hogwarts. So probably call it good on this. Uh, but we've been working on uh, a Diagon Alley layout, uh, an expanded burrow much bigger than the uh, the sets from Lego, and uh, just kind of some of the other locations. So what we'll probably do is kind of expand it from being just Hogwarts to kind of you know Wizarding World or or something like that. Uh, so expand out from the, the core of Hogwarts and do that and just kind of leave this leave this as one. I've still, again, every time you lay it out, you say, oh, I'd like to add a few little things here or there, flesh out the pathways a little bit more and maybe add just a little bit more of the greenery to help spread it out a little bit. But for the most part, I think now this this section is probably done. Though maybe I'll swap out the medieval market village. You guys, you guys can check up on me in a year and see if I've, uh, if I've gotten rid of those. And, and you've got a great spot by the door here at Brick Fair, so a lot of people yeah. come and buy. What has the public reaction been like as they kind of walk around the build and start to see the layout? Oh, yeah. That's been a lot of fun. It's been fantastic. So, uh, yeah, they've got us right by the door. I couldn't believe when I looked at the map. I was like, this is the prime spot. This is awesome. Uh, but one of, the, one of the really fun things that I hadn't thought about when I was working on this was the degree to which, you know, Harry Potter is now so generational. So you have you know, parents that walk in and they're flipping out because they loved it as a kid and they've gotten their kids into it. So their kids are flipping out. So it's just going to be kind of fun to listen and watch the reactions of these, you know, parents and their kids both getting into it together. And, you know, they're trying to spot all the little details. You can always tell people who are real fans of the franchise because they're seeing all the little, oh, that's from this or that's from that. And then, uh, yeah, my, my daughter isn't with me this time, which is stunk because she's the, the Harry Potter expert. So, like, who's that minifigure? Oh, I have no idea. You have the encyclopedia here. I needed, I needed my little encyclopedia with me, but uh, di didn't have it. So, but she'll be with me at the next one, so I'll be, I'll be covered then. Perfect. And for people who maybe want to see this in person, where else do you have plans to take this to? Yep, so uh, it's going to be at uh, Philly Brick Fest. Uh, I believe that's in October. Uh, and I'm going to try to get it to Brickworld Chicago next year. So, and uh, then if we if we succeed in pulling that off, then that'll probably be it, and we'll disassemble it after that. Though so that will be very hard to do, <laughs> mostly because I have no idea where I'm going to store all the bricks once I disassemble them. Because I started out with a, I literally had a little shoebox, one of those plastic shoebox containers of tan, and that was all I had. So this is. Uh, I have no idea how many containers full of tan it will be, but it will be a lot. <laughs> there you go. Well, excellent work. Thank you so much for continuing to expand on this and taking us through the layout. Thank you very much. Great to talk with you guys as always.